Yes, there we go. Hello. Hey, three people, three great? people. How's it going? Thank you very much for joining us. Very fucking cool. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us, yeah. Yeah, how is everyone? Everyone doing okay? Four people now. They're, they're flooding in, in, flooding in. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, hi, George. Um, so, uh, not Goldhawk, Ian, is George, who did the one of the voices for the intros and outros. He's the oh, man. rather hey. posh gentleman. Um, fucking sterling work by you, George, basically. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really good stuff. Um, again, I'm... Go on, sorry. No, I was going to say all the stuff on the intros and outros was was great. I, I really I, like it was, and it's so good to get an episode out. Um, oh, but yeah, it was like it, all the work that everyone helped you with because I didn't really have any part of any I of feel... it, like, all those things that your, your kind of creative process. But it sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm just glad that I didn't get it out sooner. Basically, these guys recorded it like weeks ago, and I've just been like dragging my heels for a, a number of reasons, right? But um, you know, it's it's all good. But um, genuinely. Hi, Phil, by the way. I said that like an offhand comment, but thanks for joining us, dude. Um, like, uh, I really, really love hearing the script coming to life, especially when other mm. people are doing it. It's just, it, it, it really, I absolutely fucking love it. Corva, thanks that's... for coming pal, back, pal. I appreciate it, dude. Um, your armor looks fucking amazing. Uh, Corva's the guy who sent us that picture of his armor that he was working on. Oh, yeah, Jumper, yeah, I sent it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Legit, that's dude. Awesome. Very, very yeah. good. Um, I think this. Sorry, I think there's that thing with any kind of creative endeavor, isn't there? Like the sort of starting of it, and that sort of the opening moments of, or in fact, it's more like just beginning is probably the toughest bit. I right? think, like, I find the motivation to begin. No, I I think it's like, God, we're gonna get really heavy like straight away, but like, um, there's a certain like anxiety is not the right word, but like to finish a project and the, the potential. Like you mm. want this potential of like something far more than maybe what you're able to do. Whereas I've, mm. I'm starting to think like I have to, I'm not starting to think, I know this. Um, it's the process. Yeah. Right. Like you're learning as you go. And just because something isn't perfect doesn't mean it's not worthwhile for somebody else or for you to do. Right. So, uh, yeah. Basically. Yeah. And I think actually that's something that, the podcast in general has given me uh like i, I always suffered essentially from this kind of uh, terminal starting of projects kind you of never problem. finished projects before ian like yeah like, and i'm saying this as your mate right like you're so talented and you're so creative but like the amount of projects that you've started not finished it's it's heartbreaking for me to watch right like and uh you know yeah I, and, and then like the, the cool thing with the podcast is like um not that anybody ever really puts us un under any pressure or anything to finish them, but the idea that we are trying to do something and we've stuck to the idea of doing something that comes out of some form of regularity. Yeah. I think that alone, and then uh, more importantly, actually living up to that in some respect is probably one of the most rewarding you, things about dude, actually you become, doing it. It's weird, like... I don't know. Like, you can always convince yourself to be worried about an action, right? Like, so... Mm -hmm. When we first started, we were really worried about the reception. And then now I'm worried because we have a responsibility to to, <laughs> to to do it well, right? Like, it's kind of funny. Like, I can convince myself that inaction is the right course of action, mm. even if all the evidence isn't it. Um, anyway, like, we're getting, yes. we're getting, we're getting way too... We're getting, for an opener, let's, but, um... let's have a couple of drinks first, Ian, and then yes. do a bit of crafting. Then we'll get really hard out like we did last <laughs> so, time. Do, do, you wanna, do you want to see my little surprise, Ian? I would love to see your little surprise. So okay. before we should, we should caveat this. Before we started, uh, Dave said to me with a cheeky little look on his face, uh, I've got a bit of surprise for you. This so... is prepared to be underwhelmed, but I was very happy about what I did. So check this out. Okay. All right. That's it. No, Ian. It's the camera move, Ian. It's the camera move. Oh. <laughs> that's that's the whole... <laughs> Stop waffling. Yeah, Dave, thanks, Phil. That's the, that's the move, Ian. That's the okay. move. So, Dave, I'm What are you away. talking about? Like, that is <laughs> impressive. That's fucking next level shit, dude. You're like, I proper literally, I literally streamers. leaned towards the camera to, to lean towards the No, I know you did. And I'm sure everyone at home did exactly the same fucking thing. But I am. This is. Look at that. Look. Look at me crafting. I'm crafting here. Look, look. That's great. Have you, is that a bit of cardboard you've got for a map there? Or? No, this is uh, a pre stuff. A bit of level. Yeah, yeah, oh, nice. I, I, but yeah, that that's 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 yeah. that was my that was my surprise scene. <laughs> thanks, okay. thanks for uh, shitting <laughs> on it so much, man. <laughs> Sorry, I was pretty impressed by that. 
I use that is actually pretty I cool. use gaffer tape, uh, as we all know, and Phil will know that there's um, yeah exactly. Yeah, thank you, thank you, George, and and Phil. And I both think it's very great. Yeah. Um, I think there I'm are the bad guy here, guys. there I'm aren't the bad guy. there aren't many problems in life that can't be solved with more lubricant or more um, uh, uh, gaffer tape, and this is a gaffer yeah. tape solution that I figured out here. So uh, yeah, pretty I good. Did it. I had this stage of watching a bunch of Mythbusters, uh, and I I watched a bunch of those ones where they're like stuck on an island with like just only duct tape, and they like build like boats and shit out of it, and all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've and got a like, big yeah, old don't you can do with duct tape. don't ask why I have this roll, obviously, but um, I do yeah. have a giant roll of gaffer tape, which uh, I've been uh... gorilla tape's legit actually. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic stuff, basically. Yeah, yeah, gorilla um... tape is legit. I've used that on actually quite a few crafting projects, just uh, as uh, well, yeah, in, in various different ways. Yeah, it's good. It's actually really I useful. Know, thing I can't even remember. Good. I don't know why I own this. That's weird. But anyway, that's that's it's my. Really useful. Okay, it's, it's Ian, actually really useful to have. You also have a surprise. So I've done my surprise, which okay. thank you. I feel kind of bad. People. Like, no, your surprise you in the chat. is kind of cooler. Um, if but you, I'll, um, uh, I'll let, let, heavy. let me let me read the chat real quick. Oh, <laughs> Lloyd's okay. in the mix as well. Fucking nerd. Um, if you if it's stuck use lube if it's loose then use gaffer tape uh, duct tape yeah absolutely dude absolutely go on in let's see let's see your uh right. let's it's see quite your heavy so i'll take it in a minute all right Ooh. okay <laughs> oh okay the fuck is that so this is a ooh, this is a uh one and a half ton uh arbor press and <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm so glad so, I went first, by the way. Uh, so the idea behind this is that lads, I want to look lads, wanna... honestly, <laughs> honestly, lads. Do you know what I'm saying? This is what this is what I have to deal with all the time. This is just standard Ian at this stage. Of course, he pulls out a fucking one. T was it one ton? It's a one and a half ton. Oh, I'm press. sorry, one and a half ton press. So Ian, sorry, I didn't mean to take that. Take so. That. Um, I need to set it up properly, but the basic idea is I wanted to work on a way of uh, ultimately trying to punch out those shapes that we've made. Um, You're industrializing so, your, your process. So I can industrialize the process. And I've kind of been thinking about various ways to do it, and I'd watch once a, a bunch of videos and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you people are taking the piss. But... <laughs> it feels like Dave sports camera, Ian gets industrial. <laughs> 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 oh oh lads uh one thing before we go any further could we just i tried to dick around with the audio a little bit and try and make us a bit more equal because it was very off last time um please let me know if it's better this time around i tried to fuck you with it so let me know anyway go on ian let's, let's talk let's yeah. see your press so <laughs> the basic principle is that i want something that um can punch shapes out so i've uh ordered some custom die presses and die presses are basically uh things that give you a relief press that will sort of press the shape in through the lever and cut it out uh, and then it retract and then you can uh, extract the, the 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 shape that has been removed um so uh there's there are kind of expensive ways of doing it with hydraulics and stuff and and other kinds of machines and things but a cheap the cheapest way i could think of doing it was with an arbor press watching a few videos on youtube and stuff so um, to, how, what's what does an arbor press set you back in? So uh, this was uh, well, actually I'm very lucky. My dad uh, is uh, like an ex like engineer at the uh, uh, the university engineering department, and uh, so he has uh, basically a whole bunch of tools. And I can be like, you don't happen to have this by any chance, do you, Dad? And it just so happened that he had a one and a half ton arbor press. Of course he did. Um, this would cost you seventy quid, I think, to get. <laughs> Last time I looked, so how much? Sorry, quid, seventy. 70 quid. Yeah, oh, that's not bad for a giant hunk of steel, is it? Really? Yeah, I mean, it, this is this is like an entry level one, um, <laughs> but you can obviously go way fancier. Um, now, uh, there's, you need to do a few um, adjustments to it, and obviously, this hasn't been proof tested yet. So I'll raise this back up. Oop. Hang on. See, see my camera. Lads, shouldn't... see what's happening here. See what's happening here. That is an un unsmooth camera move, right an there. An unsmooth camera get transition. Good, get good, mate. Honestly, you're embarrassing everyone. Um... <laughs> so, what I kind of wanted was uh, a way of essentially applying equal pressure 
because you're the the head of the Arbor Press is really designed for. Sorry, uh, the chat's fucking hilarious. By the way, like there's loads of good comments here, but it's like Lloyd's like. Uh, uh <laughs> this is all great but what does it do um enough for play what does the press do but it feels also like uh Ian's new name is tony stark <laughs> <laughs> so good ian i'll stop i'll stop interrupting you um yeah okay, i'm so glad that chat has a good idea of what it's like being friends of ian at this stage now because it's <laughs> it's just ludicrous all right ian let's show off your yeah, present so so uh, yeah, the basic principle is that um, the the head of this thing. I wonder if I can camera move you guys down actually. Ooh. So the head of this is uh, two and a half uh, centimeters or twenty five uh, millimeters by twenty five millimeters. Uh, so which is roughly the same size as the silver piece you'll see here. Um, so obviously, if I used that alone to place on a plate that was going to push down the the pressure wouldn't be even so uh to to sort of distribute the pressure that i'm pushing down uh, which is done with this handle that you'll see here sorry about the dodgy camera moves but basically it's great this, it's great bud. basically you turn this to apply pressure now there's several things you have to do to set it up uh i'm i'm acting like other people that may be going to want to do this but i i, I don't know but it, like it, uh, just go for it dude i'm enjoying it i'm sure other people are as well so uh, there's the kind of point of pressure which you want, which I'll have to work out where it, once I've got things set up. So there's a couple of modifications that I need to make. I have to get a steel plate which will go on this surface here, which will be flat. And then on top of that, I'm going to have essentially a piece of acrylic, uh, not acrylic, sorry, uh, yeah, kind of light plastic material, which essentially will be a chopping board, like a kitchen chopping board, one of those cheap yeah. ones you can buy. That makes sense. Uh, so that will go on top of the so steel. So effectively, plate. you're not blunting your the cutting um... blades when I push down. Exactly. But the, the, the steel plate will give me a smooth surface. When you get an arbor plate, I'll just show you. Uh, sorry, an arbor press. It comes with a disc like this, yeah. which is no good for lever work because this isn't really designed for lever work. This is designed for um, essentially punching out shapes in, in metal. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of making a tool do something it's not really designed to do. Um, so anyway, the principle is that the point of pressure, which is when this pole, and again, they saw about the dodgy camera moves, it's great. when this pole is at like a, a position like this, that's kind of the optimum place. So then when I apply press, downward pressure, like here would be sort of engage. Uh, so you're talking like a ratio of the turn, right? Yeah, I mean, like you don't want to be like pulling, you don't want to be tugging it up here, right? You want to be applying the pressure down here, you know, so you can actually put your body weight on it. Uh, because the, the press is capable of putting one and a half tons of pressure, but obviously you've got to be able to apply force enough for it to do that. Um, the, it's very simple to adjust as well. By standard, you'll see there's like, um, let's see if I can point to it. You just need a little Allen key to adjust this, which will let you then change the, the ratchet ratio here. The position of the ratchet can then be slid up or down to basically change the height at which this ram is positioned. So that's basically that. Anyway, in order to apply equal pressure, I'm sorry this is really boring for people. Oh, Ian, it's, um, it's all good, buddy. Don't apologize. I've basically got a magnet here, which is attached to a piece of uh, a steel, which is kind of then rubber coated. And that just came with the magnet when I got it. And the idea is that that can clip on and that will give me a flatter surface that will then apply pressure pushing down on whatever die cut that I have to press down. So the point of pressure now will then apply over all of that. Hopefully that makes sense to people. I'm sorry if I'm not explaining it very well, but that's the basic gist. Right, I'll... so that's my little thing. It's a very much an experiment in process. Right, Lloyd just sent a link. I'm gonna, I'm, actually, I'm completely fucking speechless by the way. It's, uh... oh my God, I need to install ad block on this computer. Um... <clears throat> but yeah, so, uh... All of that is oh, kind yeah. of like me trying to think of ways to uh, speed up the process if I wanted to ever sort of look at maybe trying to make some in a quicker fashion to either well, just I, produce more I think you can or do, sell. Do, or do, I don't you can know, do loads of stuff like this. Uh, Lloyd just posted a very good video of, of a guy doing exactly what you're talking about here is doing it with lever work where he's punching out shapes. It's in chat right now. Um, is that because I got this from a guy called Jordy Steele? This guy's called so Harry Rogers, and uh, he's uh, 
He's using his ratchet arbor press for crafting, level work, etc. So yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. So yeah, I've seen his videos as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Will it? Uh, but will it do three millimeter lever? Yes, I'm sure it will. Absolutely, dick fuck. Um, three millimeter lever, right? I but... hope so. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I don't actually know. Um, again, all of this is experimental. Um, I, I, uh, essentially, that there are better tools than that like they're actually purpose built for the job uh but they cost like 120 quid plus so this is kind of the budget version of doing it i think um, isn't that very fitting for what we do though i think that's that's well, i think that's great right like trying to get some sort of like entry level stuff on the go is is this well whole worthwhile. technique is designed around obviously being affordable uh and stuff i mean obviously i'm kind of exploring its kind of possible applications and ways of kind of doing it in different ways, but the actual stuff that we've kind of looked at before, you know, just the lever and the uh, self-adhesive foam, but the, the entry cost to producing this kind of material, this kind of armor is very cheap. Um, I guess for reference to show people what we're sort of talking about. Um, so we're talking about basically making things like this, um, you know, or in the case of the armor I'm working on now, stuff like this um so yeah so what's your plan here are you planning on on eventually selling some of this stuff like surely no. one man can only have so many sets of armor right I, I i like i quite like the idea of like selling it like in character maybe or or just producing stuff just i think it'll be I don't interesting know. i don't really know it'll be interesting to see how cheap we can get everything and work out exactly how much cost it is to produce a piece of armor plus obviously your man time man time, well that's man, the thing man, like that's the main hours. thing the, this whole process uh the, the way it stands now is it's materials cheap but time expensive so you could never do it really for any kind of profit because mm. you just you'd have to charge as much as it would cost to just go out and buy an expensive suit of armor anyway in which case you should probably buy an expensive suit of armor but it's, it uh, doesn't come down to like also i think the interesting thing here is in character coin right like we are very in character coin light like we don't have yes. much money so like and you're the you're the only person in our group that's really produced any high ticket items right like um yeah like i've i think i've provided beer money at best with the stuff i've sold right so um, yeah, I mean, and a lot of the stuff I've made, like the books and stuff, they're very labor intensive. Uh, uh, I mean, now I've done them, I could print off more, but I, I, I guess I find this a more rewarding process because the books have reached the stage where essentially you'll have to do is print them out. I, I think this goes back to like this that. goes back to what we were talking about before. Like the process is important, right? Like by by using new tools and new techniques, you're probably going to come up with new ideas and new designs and a whole bunch of other crap that you're going to be able to do off the back of this, right? Which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of other stuff with the press anyway. Like um, you can use it as a, a sort of a hole punch and stuff. And and because with the application of that magnet, you can then start using it in conjunction with a whole bunch of other tools. Like I could essentially use it as a a, a rivet setter or a um an eyelet uh setter as well stuff like that so it'd be interesting, uh, to, see, of... it'd be interesting to see what you could do maybe with um punching holes in steel or aluminium yeah so it, it, i mean really it's designed for applying obviously a fair amount of force over a very small surface area in order to puncture um very light steel or aluminium yeah um so it, it, it will do those kind of things relatively well if you're trying to make obviously small punches uh, obviously over those bigger yeah. sort of surface areas again this is all very experimental there there are better tools that you can buy to achieve the results that i'm trying to achieve but i'm trying to do it on a budget uh, in fact that didn't cost me anything because i'm exactly. very lucky exactly right let me just um, go through so chat a little bit um feels like fancy pants talis uh with the only one <laughs> set of course not um you can flog it uh for monstering i totally agree i think flogging it for monstering would be a really good shout right like i think lots of people would be interested in having a, a decent set because let me put it this way you you go off and you buy your armor and that usually might not be very fitting for a, a, a monstering right um do, 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 do. hold on <laughs> Ian's ignoring economies of scale. You could probably factory line press the lever shapes out and do a million in an hour. 
uh, it takes yeah. time but i bet if you were invested you could probably make it quite profitable uh how much is the die or uh for doing the print how much was the die by the way so I've got die, uh, die cuts for all of the different shapes that I released on that PDF that I released previously. Uh, and it's basically cost me £119 to but get all of all those of made. The shapes? For all of the Jeez. shapes, yeah. How many different shapes are there? There's six. So six. Okay. So was so, that like you know, uh, not 20 cheap. quid each? Yeah, roughly. Yeah, okay, roughly. Cool. It, it did because I wanted six them as a batch he kind of gave me a discount i think yeah i think uh, i think um uh, lloyd is right here i think there is a yeah uh, no, let's, I agree. let's see what i was right? referring okay. to with the expense was the expense of doing it without the press yeah like it, it would in order to do it without the press it would take so long uh, but yes with the press i think it will hopefully speed up the whole process and actually make it that i could essentially do it at a rate where i'd be comfortable to sell it uh, for a, a, a small amount, you know, rather than sort of have to sort of feel like I had to rather charge a certain a amount. Or do it seat, as like right? a, yeah, something yeah. something a bit more realistic, right? Yeah, um, I think that's all very feasible, Ian, and I can't wait. Yeah, for I mean, to I'm hoping make so. us loads yeah, of money. It's just, it's just it's really an experiment, right? We'll see where it goes. Um, all of this is really just kind of like trying to uh, pioneer it to a stage, and I'm sure there'll be other people who can then take it the the further steps beyond if they are interested in it. I think the whole process and the whole technique is very accessible doesn't require a lot of skill um and you can kind of choose your entry level and i think that's a really attractive aspect about it yeah i think phil makes a good point here is the repeated quality of the shapes as well that's very important here um are you going to punch out holes as part of the die yeah so the dies will come with the holes actually as part of them as well so the whole you're saving thing will... so much time and yeah, energy exactly. doing this like it's in fact i'm kind of embarrassed that i'm about to just start crafting here but um yeah i'm yes. actually gonna i'm gonna point the camera down a bit and then uh yeah, I'm, I'm, going gonna start to, crafting too. I'm going to start crafting uh, um it's a pretty sweet camera move i think we can all agree um, yes so uh is this press can you do brass aluminium even stainless steel um it depends how thick and it depends what you're trying to, trying to press out um, how do you mean so well, again, if the press is designed for basically applying uh, one and a half tons of pressure over a small area, so obviously that's fine, and that's what it's designed to do to uh, on, on metal, and that's steel, brass, aluminium, but over a very small area. So, for example, if you wanted to punch out a, a hole punch size hole, then yes, it would do that. I don't think it would have the... Uh, the force necessary to say punch out a die cut style shape that I'm making completely out of steel. I don't think that will happen. Mm. Um, a good question here is um, the more complicated the die, the less viable. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah. And I, I, I can't see it if you're punching, especially if you're punching it out of metal. Um, I can't see that really working. Uh, out of leather and foam, which is what I'm going to be using it for, I think it will be perfectly reasonable. And um, Phil's asking, uh, did you see the Orcs Planet video? I'm thinking of following the process to make a woven leather kit. Um, I did see that. I haven't I seen see that, that, actually, and I it's quite worth like watching, watching actually. I must have missed it. Um, yeah, it's really worth watching. I think it's... A, um, I actually think you could probably do that as well if um, you've just got a whole bunch of belts laying around i think that's a very uh, another way of doing I remember it. you, you mentioning that before ian you talked about um the uh hero belts and stuff and all those off-cut belts that you were talking about yeah uh, charity shops are a really good place to go i mean this isn't rocket science and i'm sure lots of people in the hobby will know this but obviously yeah, if you go to charity shops and and things like that you you can often source all kinds of things um and uh, actually, women's belts uh, in charity shops are often really quite nice and come in some quite nice and usable shapes right. that you could probably put to, to quite nice uses. Um, Lloyd, who's in chat, he actually managed to find some really nice ones. It's just really about how you creatively want to use them um, and, and, and apply them in what the crafts that you're making. Uh, I always have a stack of belts, basically, um, just on hand. I find that like 
even if it's just obviously, an, Ian, it's Ian, Ian, Ian. Like, hold on, let me. Ov- obviously, Ian has a stack of belts just lying around, right? Obviously, but uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've got like um, one time I have to cut. I'll, maybe I'll show you guys some of the stuff in my sort of pantry cupboard and stuff. Like, I've got like just stuff that I try and kind of always keep stocked around, and that ranges just from real simple stuff like uh, having Thanks, um, yeah, sort of cap rivets and stuff like that, all in pouches. <laughs> to like really sort of silly things like um uh having uh washers for example like what i'm using now um just loads of stuff i mean obviously all the foam and things i've been working on um but but yeah i think like actually just having stuff kicking about is really nice because then you can kind of when you get to those bits of projects and you build this up over time by the way guys this isn't something that you do like straight away um, but as I'm kind of going to craft shops or charity shops and things like that, I often just see things like a, that. Sometimes I've seen like a handbag uh, and it's been like super cheap or something, right? It's just been like a quid for a handbag. And, like, and it's like a, a leather woman's handbag, right? So it's like you can just cut that up. You know what I mean? The mm-hmm. straps are all good. The buckles are good. There's loads of things you can use, for, like uh, those kind of aspects for so yeah like, definitely sort of dipping into sort of thrift shops and things like that and i finding think kind of... i think thrift shops after quarantine is going to be a fucking gold mine i think there's going to be an absolute crap ton of awesome stuff out there because how many people are going to clean out their uh like i'm doing it right and i'm i'm not really yeah, i do give stuff to charity shops but i'm already making a pile of stuff that i want to give away so i'm sure there's going to be a whole heap load of stuff down there um phil says i'm over 40 uh takes a while all the crafting bits built up um, a nice project box. Yeah, very true. Um, yeah, I, see, I mean, um... I see old sofas. Yeah, it's a, yeah, right. Um, there's also uh, that's a full set of armor right there. Yeah, and a sofa. Fuck yeah, that is. Um, yeah. Then Ian, um, Ian, I raided all my wife's old leather bags in the loft. I hope she never <laughs> asked for them. That's <laughs> fucking amazing, dude. That's hilarious. Yeah. I love that. Your secret is safe with us, man. This is the uh, we'll we'll all make a, a trust pack here. What stay, what goes on on stream stays on stream. All right, Phil. No, no need to dob anyone in. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to dip this camera down as well and get and get crafting too. I think. Oh, is that um, Anna? I'm, I'm... Anna's joined us. I think. And Anna, we were just singing uh, George's praises, which I also want to extend to you. I think both of your performances were absolutely fantastic on the podcast. So thank you so much again for doing those. It's uh, yeah, thanks so much, guys. It's fucking it sounds cool. incredible. Everyone's performances were, were awesome. Like really, really awesome. Chat is Vegas, absolutely, Phil. Uh, Lloyd, sorry, um, just uh, go crazy in there. I think we had um, someone was uh, throwing underwear at the screen a couple of streams ago. So uh, you know, anything goes. Anything goes. Um, boop. Right. By the way, I am like desperately trying to do some crafting right now. I was like, oh man, I've been kind of lax with the crafting, so I'm going to do the crafting on the stream. But um, so if I ignore chat. Yeah, I think apologies. last time we actually did almost no crafting. I did we two did and a half plates. I did, yeah. and they were, that, it was, they were already like, I just needed to punch holes in them. It wasn't even like I was doing anything else. So, um, yeah. Oh no, Anna, thank you so much. It's just like you and George, like, um, I don't know. You're both very talented, and it really came across in the recordings that you gave me, and uh, hopefully, it come across in the podcast. Um, um, ooh, fancy running around um, some Ted Baker braces. <laughs> I like that idea. You, it's just you just use designer leather from Italy for everything. Um, that's uh, an orc war skirt. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, there's loads of really cool stuff that you can do for war, war skirts. That's something I've not actually done, but I've had a whole bunch of ideas for, for things. And the great thing with that is uh, just you, you, you can make stuff really simply and ruggedly. And I think it will work really, really well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry about the noise, by the way, guys. But, um... It's a crafting stream, Ian. I'm sure yeah. everyone's okay with that. Cool. Um... Yeah, how I I really enjoyed that chat I had with um, James as well. That was a good time. Very nice fella. Um, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was just it's just a really nice episode, right? Like, um, I think it's nice to to do something a bit different. I think you know you could tell you guys were enjoying yourself. Well, it's also like he's um, 
um, I'm kind of get back into getting back into uh, <laughs> a bit of crafting ASMR. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, absolutely, George. Get crazy, man. Do whatever you want. No one's watching you, bud. Get crazy. Um, the um, it's another one of the Venn diagram things that we haven't really mentioned is tabletop gaming. Um, mm. And like uh, he, I think he liked a tweet or something. And I remember being like, oh, I wonder who, I don't really use Twitter that much or know really how it works. So um, I uh, clicked on him and then was just like, holy crap, this guy worked on loads of stuff that I really, really enjoy. So that's why I fired him a message. Uh, I'm really getting a, a scary interest into Warhammer 40K at the moment, which is making my bank balance uh, tremble in fear right now so yeah um, i don't think i could ever go back no this. ian ian don't don't i'm not i'm not ian i'm not gonna drag you with me it's okay i'm i'm not like you but um the although having said that they're gonna release um ninth edition in the next couple of weeks and they're also gonna release some new starter book sets so I'll probably be 10th edition about a month after that to be honest well, going yeah but what i was thinking was they've got this cool <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna i'm just gonna like talk about uh 40k for a bit but um they're they're releasing this thing called crusades which is like um like a narrative based where you get to level up your troops and kind of have a bit more of a kind of involved thing with it um so i was right. thinking about picking up a starter box and basically just having them for me and other people ian um coming over <laughs> and uh, maybe playing a few games at my house sometime i think that'd be quite fun yeah, for a nostalgia fun. that's what i mean Ian. i'm not asking you to um invest anything but uh occasionally maybe have a bit of a play with me from right. uh, that doesn't sound right at all but um <laughs> yeah i think that'd be quite fun right yeah that would be good fun that so good fun. i'm not that. i'm not really sure i think it's gonna be necrons who are like they're kind of like yeah, they're undead. Probably, they're terminated, they're undead, right? They're, yeah, exactly. Um, and probably space marines. Um, so I think that could be quite fun. But um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So you reminded me of um, there's there's a guy I watch. Uh, he's it's like from the Yogs cast called uh, Angry Tom. Oh, he's there's great. There's a there's um, a, a thing of him talking to another person he works with called Ben, who's quite into like the 40k lore. And he was talking about how the fact that like land speeders and land raiders aren't uh, aren't called land speeders or land raiders because they raid or speed over land. Uh, they changed the canon so it's actually they are called land speeders and land raiders because of a guy called Archon um, Archon Land or something. Yes, he was basically like a tech pr priest. I mean, and it's like it's the most like stupid thing. Let's right? face it, mistakes were made. Um, is all I have and to say. And then it's that. like everybody like then it was just at least all the jokes of like, what if you discover that the emperor isn't actually called the emperor? <laughs> he's, he was uh, born. He's actually called Jimmy Space. <laughs> he, he had his Space Marines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, I'm actually listening to the Horus Heresy. Horus Heresy. Um, yes. I've just started listening to them. I actually fell asleep listening to it and had to kind of figure out where I was. You know, when you're listening to Audible. And I dozed yeah. off and then had to figure out where I was in the book, which was an absolute pain in the ass. Right, um, here we go. Like this, uh, way to get into crafting. Yes, George, I think uh let me put it this way, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna trot my army out for Ian and he's gonna play with it, and then in six months' time he'll be a full addict again. Um yeah, uh, Phil has a two thousand point genus dealer cult army. I actually quite like the genus dealer cults. I think they look really fucking That's cool. my old school bread and bacon. I'm yeah, this, no, uh... this uh this is a genus dealer cult Ian, not the genus dealers. They're slightly different. Um they're actually a different faction. No, no, I, I had a I had genus dealer cult. Oh did you? I thought That's they were just straight first, genus dealers. Huh, interesting. I had uh, Genus Dealer Cult was my first army, and then I went into uh, Tyranids properly after that. Yeah, we are literally no, talking like, 20 was, years ago, there right? No, there were no Tyranids when we first started. It was just Gene Stealers. Yeah, that's we're true. We're talking like old. We're, we're, this is like second edition when we were playing. Um, George had a, used to collect Space Marines back in the day, um, and then don't have much Smurfs chapter. Oh, are you talking about um, Space Marines here? Uh, ATC was found oh, by him. Chapter. What's a yeah? Wow, Ian. Wow, wow. Um, what's a ATC uh, was founded by him? What's ATC? I don't know what that is. But yeah, I mean, I, I think as well. The other weird thing is, um, uh, I never okay. actually enjoyed the games. Uh, I never really like actually as war games. I never found them that enjoyable. There is there is an ulterior motive for this. I am actually. Um, 
there's quite a uh, a happening local scene in my area um and frankly i actually don't know that many people that live in milton Keynes, so it's actually going to be a route for me to kind of maybe have something locally yeah, that i can go and do yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. and so there is a, a kind of um even if i go and get my ass handed to me and buy some real nerds each week i think i'll, <laughs> I'll actually really enjoy it so uh ultramarines the template made to produce weapons and war gear on 40k oh interesting okay cool i did not know that yeah my law is uh it's not bad actually i know a little bit yeah i kind of uh, yeah basically most of the games i enjoyed best from uh, Games Workshop with like the, the smaller games they made, things like Blood Bowl or Necromunda. Oh, Necromunda um, for sure. Necromunda was great. Um, Warhammer Quest was good fun. Yeah, I actually really love those um, those kind of adventure based like Hero Quest and Adventure Quest, like, those sort of things. Yeah, the idea of like uh, persistency in like what you're saying actually with that thing they're trying to bring in where your units will have persistent things that are associated with them. That sounds fun. Uh, I think it, I think it will add. I think like let me put it this way: the way that we're gonna play uh, Warhammer Forty K, we're gonna much more enjoy having. Um, yeah, Corva love Necromunda. Fuck yeah, Necromunda for the win. Um, the the kind of narrative based stuff, right? So I, the way I picture it in my head is I'm gonna set up a campaign and have like fun stuff in it, right? So it may not be the most competitive game in the world, but I think it'll be fun to kind of. You know, tell a story while we're doing it, right? I think that'd be really cool. And then see what the dice rolls say, right? There's always that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a bit like Blood Bowl, right? Like, Blood Bowl's like a dice mitigation game, basically. Yeah. You're trying to get the other guy to roll the dice if you... But it's um, part of it is sometimes just saying, fuck it, and just going for some stupidity. Um, almost more d d oriented 40k. 100%. Like, um, it's... Yeah, I, I need to... Honestly, I need to see what starter packs come out. I need to see how the things are all set up. But, yeah, I mean, what's what's better than hanging out with your buddy for an afternoon and rolling some dice and playing with some miniatures, man? It's... Uh, I'm looking forward to it, basically. I mean, we've been doing a fair bit of D&D recently, or more than we have done for, for a while. Yeah, once a um, week, right? It's been good. Doing it. um, and that's been really good fun. It's been it's been good fun getting back into it again and just uh, you know everyone's been sort of like having their own sort of adult sort of lives and stuff that I think you know can crowd out a lot of these kind of hobbies over time. Well, I think um, it's, but it's nice to sort of make space for them again. I think having a mix in our group at the moment of having like experienced players and less experienced players has been really fun. It's been educational mm. for everyone involved, really. So, um, have you guys talked about Teddy and Skane on stream? No, we haven't talked about anything really. Um, Black Forest. Uh, Blackstone Fortress 40k Quest <laughs> yeah exactly um, no we haven't we haven't talked about our D&D characters um, do you, would people like to hear about our D&D characters that is really nerdy that's like telling someone about your tragic backstory isn't it telling someone about your <laughs> D&D character it's like uh, that's great man thanks for telling me how the fuck do I get out of this conversation right <laughs> that's that's actually a really interesting thing with like your your backstory and larp is kind of like and, and how you use it like what it actually feels like really it's it fuels I, you uh, very often i i think you know? it's yeah it's a very internal thing rather than external well it depends actually it depends whether you like you can i think the obvious one is that you can have a distinct hatred for x because of your backstory right yeah. so um, you might be very like up for if you live in Faroz, for example, you could be like, wow, I really, really hate those damn Grendel, right? Or or whatever it might be. Uh, High Guard probably with, what, like, uh, Druge? Everything. Everything, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, why not? Um, what setting are you playing? So we're playing 5th uh, edition at the moment. Um, we're in the Forgotten Realms. It's um... Yeah. And yeah, Ooh. Ian, you probably know better down. stuff than me. Do you want to have a, do you want to describe what the the whole thing is? Oh, oh, sorry, it dropped out. It's all right, bud. It's, it's Discord, dude. It's gonna happen. There you go. There he is. Um, yeah, Ian, back. describe uh, describe the setting and stuff and how we're playing. Yeah, it was just uh, up until now. It's been, I suppose, uh, fairly standard kind of um 
uh, Forgotten Realms stuff, so I've been sort of running around. I can't, can't pronounce it very well. Uh, Ferun. Fandolin. Well, that's that's the place that we've been. Oh, actual... is this the region that you're talking about? Well, the whole the world, right? Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know any of this yeah. stuff. <laughs> um... Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? But like uh, traditionally, we've never actually really played any of the like proper settings but there's always been stuff that we've homebrewed i think we've always the first seen time we played legit dnd yeah i think we've always like... viewed dnd as more like a, a set of rules and a game that you can play in our own environments um lloyd actually in chat um hasn't really done much dming so we ran however many 10 session camp or more i don't know how many sessions we've actually done but um off one of the um starter books so we've gone from level uh one two five through that campaign um and fuck dude that was so just i, I had the best time i absolutely love my character right now he's he's yeah. his name's uh theodore chad theodore chadwick hurst and um my friends call me teddy you can call me teddy um that i absolutely love teddy so much he's a paladin who is this noble and he's just ridiculous and awesome he's like this big six foot something blonde head muscle bound like goat but incredibly brave and like he's always the first one in the fight and just wants to defeat evil all the time and i absolutely love playing him he's uh he's the best i love teddy um and now he's level five so he gets all like cool shit like a um <laughs> also this character sounds weird yeah um homebrew campaigns yeah i totally agree um and a, a homebrew campaign produces uh more flexibility for all play fuck yeah like the whole entire point about D D is um it's supposed to be like loose and free and um you know you can kind of have fun with it right like what's the point like, like we talk about in larp right you don't want to do anything that you um in a fantasy or rp environment that that's that's boring or that you don't enjoy right it's supposed to be an absolute send-up teddy is not a nightmare teddy is fucking brilliant go fuck yourself lloyd do you know what i mean like uh just because you can't handle him um because he keeps rolling natural 20s they haven't made mean, a door that can there's can not a door that can keep him in man yeah he's he's notorious for uh we sneak somewhere and we're like hanging outside the door being like okay what are we gonna do Right, I'll go in and I'll cast this, and then you do this, and I'll do that, and like Teddy's just like, fucking goblins, and then just kicks the fucking door in and just starts wailing on hell. It's just the best. I absolutely love him. I haven't managed to jump through any windows yet, which is something I really want to do going forward. Um, also, I've just got a new magic horse, which I like the idea of, and he's going to be called Sebastian. And I intend on either jumping through a window onto Sebastian's back or maybe from Sebastian's back through a window into a fight of some type. Or you so... could go like uh, True Lies style and jump <laughs> with Sebastian into a swimming pool or yeah. some shit. Fuck yeah, dude. Like anything anything goes with Teddy. Anything goes. He's an absolute... Um... And I love the fact is it, not only does he do all this stuff, but he manages to pull it off so much. Like um... Your roles have been ridiculous. So yeah. like got to get goody and got to get the those, contrast get those between us two the contrast between us two is ridiculous oh you know i feel it's so like... bad man because it's like i'm not really like a firm believer in lucky and unlucky rolls ian but god damn man you <laughs> fuck <laughs> um... hey, man, it... hold on what's this the uh... thing is as well when it happens when i'm dming as well like the number of times i've just had real shit rolls which actually when you're dming makes things quite fun um, yeah yeah i think the actually, danger... when, you're, when you're playing your character is quite good fun as well the danger of a character like teddy is he completely dominates the party and becomes this absolute nightmare so there were moments where i had to be like is everyone okay with just teddy going full teddy on this and like i think at first he was a bit of a uh, misunderstood character i would say but now i think just by like bravery is important right like teddy isn't just mouth he will literally stand in front of a whole bunch of big bugbears and take an absolute shit kicking for the party and then want to go back in for some more you know what i mean because he's fucking teddy right he actually believes in what he's doing wholeheartedly so um 
And meanwhile, I'm a, uh, a lizard man called Skane. Yeah. Oh, hold, on, hold on one second. Anna says, uh, Teddy sounds like Toddy off the Yorks. We, I actually love him doing that impression. And maybe I am channel, channeling. Fucking whole... Toddy! <laughs> fucking Toddy! But, yes. Actually, now you said that. Wow. Just like Have I just completely... <laughs> I think I've completely ripped him off, actually. That's you have ripped him off. Oh, look at me. I've been, I've been... That's very good, Anna. You called him out. Someone's yeah. got to. Uh, his way out of it. oh yeah when i kick the door in and then there's like a whole bunch of bugbears and i'm like oh i'm sorry i was looking for the bathroom and they were like <laughs> i managed to convince them that i wasn't actually there yeah, to you just uh, like roll a 20 casually just roll 20s man I think, I think like people think that D D can be a hard game but all you actually need to do is just roll 20s consistency uh, consistently and then it's like a really easy game right like uh <laughs> this uh, game is so easy <laughs> why won't they make this game harder it's too easy um okay <laughs> i may have to go it's an emergency um the no pop left oh phil get away man thanks so much for joining us yeah. as always phil we really appreciate have a good it one, dude. that's good um Best oh luck. i also rolled a i got knocked down and then i immediately rolled the natural 20 to pop right back up again because you could have you could say you got knocked down but then you got up again yeah there's nothing that's ever going to keep you down <laughs> oh god <Ian. laughs> oh <laughs> oh, well, that, that song's gonna be stuck in my head for the next week. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, yeah, see you in a bit, Phil. Have fun, buddy. Um, Have a good yeah, one, go Phil. on in. Talk about your character. Talk about Skane. Um, yeah, so Skane's, um he's a lizard man. Uh, he's a druid. Um, I guess he's kind of, he's supposed to be the, the darkest character in the group, but points he kind of has and hasn't been. He's kind of um, lovable. He is kind of like, in this sense of like, he just has a, his view of the world is he, is very kind of like, you know, uh, sort of, well, very nature-based, all the kind of tropes that you'd expect from a druid, really, of that type. Um, but he's quite kind of like a primal character who has uh, a quite he, kind of a... I like uh, how... Sort of more of the jungle kind of logic to how things work. He also wants to learn, right? Like, yeah. he's kind of away yeah. from his tribe and doesn't really know how things are going, so he really tries to listen to other characters. And I would say, like, him and Teddy have got on very well despite yeah. being very different I mean, obviously we, we get on very well but i like the interaction yeah, I think, between um, those he's, characters. he's definitely gravitated towards uh, <clears throat> a few characters for sure um and has grown a sort of sense of humanity he, he actually uh, announced that he would not in fact eat uh certain people if they died which is incredibly touching that the lizard man <laughs> would not just see teddy as meat if he died which is you know a very uh it's big steps it's big steps man that's that's character development right there so um yeah it was we, a very touching moment great, yeah we had some really good moments it's um i mean sadly we can't really say too much about the campaign itself because it is a pre-written campaign so oh, that's there, very there, true. there might be potentials of spoilers in there yeah uh, that's based true. on what we did but um i guess the result that we chose uh out of whatever options were available was kind of like it, it you know it was interesting because it was maybe the kind of thing which my character might gravitate towards to, but to, your character chose to engage in to be fair the actual end of the campaign um lloyd did a bit of jiggly pokery which is some of the best dming like you know just to yes, was, just to was... tweak things a tiny bit and make it a bit more relevant to characters so yeah huge moral questions for teddy and um will teddy be changed probably not like he's still gonna love kicking in doors and defeating evil so um yeah it's good um he yeah, no, that's not that's not true actually he has learned a lot from that whole experience i would say right he's um he's yeah. developing as a character for sure and i can't wait to like basically a lot of the stuff with teddy as well is he's um he's the fourth brother of the chadwick hearse uh family and like his three older brothers are all like these fantastically famous heroes who everybody's heard of and is like they sing songs about so whenever he introduces himself to like common folk they're like chadwick hearse oh like uh are you one of the these brothers the three brothers and i'm like no no, no, no there are there are four brothers actually you know like uh and it's kind of a, a point of shame for him that he's a bit he's the ugly duckling um... of the family you phrased it like you were the other Baldwin, didn't you? Yeah, the other Baldwin. Yeah, I think I wrote that on my character sheet. Yeah, I'm the other Baldwin. Um, not not one of the successful, good-looking, uh, talented ones. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think Teddy, like, I can't wait for that. I, and I don't think we should rush it, is the kind of 
the the return home redemption arc and to see who yeah. Teddy is when he comes home and to see how he reacts to his family who basically he he left the family because of his brothers and his dad roughhoused him an awful lot and after a, a particularly bad evening he decided that he would pack up his this is literally written on the character sheet he after a, a night of particularly bad roughhousing he um he left to go and uh, make a name for himself um, and to seek glory. Um, and that was two years ago at the start of the campaign, right? So he's kind of, at the start of the campaign, he's kind of down on his luck and just looking for looking for <laughs> something to make his name, you know, so he doesn't have to live in his shadow of his, his like, brothers. When we family. got into the first fight of the campaign, which uh, is basically an ambush. Uh, I think it's can, an ambush! <laughs> you can see a mole coming, by the way, so that's yeah. not... Um, not a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like the arrows in the, the so there's a there's a there's a there's a path and we're following it and then we come across two dead horses and um, there's loads of arrows with black um, feathers in the back. So I'm like, yeah. uh, like Teddy walks over there and he's just like, I'm yelling back to the other characters. I think it's gonna be an ambush. And then all these <laughs> arrows start firing. And then I'm like, I ask like, are they the same arrows? And Lloyd's like, yeah. And I'm like, and then I yell back. I think it's the same people who killed the horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he says he's playing a paddling. Who's his deity? He doesn't have a deity, but he is a uh, a vengeance um, uh, paladin. So he's kind of um, all full of wrath and bravado. Like we're not playing it completely straight. Obviously, he's um, he's a bit more. I don't know. Like I think the danger with a uh, paladin is it can get. Uh, you don't want to just be the moral preachy guy all the time like he's just up, really up for a fight basically all the time and to he's much happier it, also there's a there's a touch of barbarian to him so he's much more he's really really happy in violence right like the purity of violence and defeating evil like that's when he's there's no i don't know insecurities or worries it's just steel against flesh and spurting blood and roaring with just you know what i mean like he absolutely fucking loves it like uh yeah so anyway cool we've got a really interesting party uh though i think that's one of the main things uh, a lot of it's uh, about the players we're all really good friends so you know as with all good D campaigns it, it's it comes down really to just good times good laughs yeah we have a you know. we have a surly bard uh, called perrin um <laughs> who's just rude to everyone and i really like him um played and, by bungle by bungle and he does uh little ditties to to boost the team we've got um uh martin who's a very kind of surly again but like really kind of uh sassy sassy he's a sassy um he's a sass machine in fact he's a, yeah he is he's a real he's a re and he's also like a coward which is also like subtly uh martin weaves that into stuff where he's always kind of like he's just kind of like everything's a bit of an inconvenience for him like having to go and scout for the team and like put himself in danger and all that stuff like i think he's playing it really he's really kind of well. become braver though i think that's the, or he's discovered his own bravery i think it, which he's kind of thing, i think there's I think. with all the characters i think there's like what's great about this stuff is like you can write a character sheet and think that that's like this is my character but through the nature of like playing the game and and how you react to certain events like i feel like martin's character is on a real um the cusp of a lot of character change and in fact the we, we're swapping dms uh Martin, lloyd is going to start being a player and ian's going to lead dming for a little while and i think yeah. ian without me overstepping the mark here um it's going to be a lot more about the um the sassy surly um rogue this time right rogue, yeah uh, I, ranger. I, kinda, I wanted to try and kind of weave a couple of play characters backstories more into what we're going to be doing next so uh that's going to be part of it yeah, um, but totally. yeah, I, I won't really spoil anything. No, um, don't, don't. I'm really looking forward to it, dude. We're just, we're just finishing up um, a short, like one-shot campaign that <laughs> Mark's doing, really um, which is just like an absolute bonkers, fey magic. Um, yeah, it's we're on the, we've got like an hour left to go with the final boss fight, and all of our characters are just like the shadiest. Uh, all of us are thieves. Uh, I'm a. Um, actually, I can actually. I probably. Can, yeah, I can talk about this. No one's actually. Gonna, uh, my guy is literally a um, a confidence trickster who, for the entire campaign, has been 
playing mm-hmm. a different character, right? Like he's he's like um he's introduced himself and for the entire campaign has been playing as somebody else because he's doing a long con right now. So he's pretending to be someone else that he isn't. Um which it might not even get revealed, right? Which I think is fantastic. I think everyone's kind of worked it out. Yes, definitely. And I also well, think I mean, um I think going my character f- hasn't because he's stupid. But Yeah, but I think going forward, like um yeah, actually I won't spoil that because uh, I've got some stuff that I'd like to maybe do when when all said and done. If I survive, but bear in mind like I'm a sorcerer. I'm a gnome sorcerer w- with twelve hit points and no fucking um AC, so I, I think I'm gonna go squish basically, like in this final boss fight. Oh but, yeah, we're um, all gonna we're all gonna pop. Like yeah. every single battle we've had against anything, one of oh, us has fuck. been. Lloyd doesn't know. God damn it! <laughs> Sorry, Lloyd. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Stupid internet. Anyway, sorry. And what were you saying? Yeah, I think we're all gonna basically die. Yeah. In that- <laughs> yeah, I think so too. That 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 video you sent me of uh, Predator was absolutely fantastic. With Billy saying, "There's something out there hunting us." <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no man. It ain't no man. We all gonna die. We all gonna die. <laughs> so good. Man. You know you're fucked when the, the kind of Native American badass is telling you that you're all gonna die. Yeah, the absolute legit bad motherfucker who's not scared of anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Something. I love it. Crazy. He's he's just such a brilliant character in that movie. I love that movie so much. Dude, when this quarantine thing's over, man, you should. Uh, we should head over and just have a few drinks and uh watch predator and again watch and just movies, yeah. horrendously quote it the entire way through it's, um it's, stu- it's just a stupidly quotable movie billy get me out of this hole how many times <laughs> does that come up in day-to-day usage you'll be surprised right it's a uh... get to yeah, the man. chopper it's like that the cast of the movie is really really good as well like it actually stands as a legit movie in my opinion i think it's like I mean, I could probably talk quite a lot about the uh, why it's so important and when it was made with this idea of like the mid eighties uh, muscle man action hero and being um, like just the oh, sorry, my phone went off. Um, uh, like and then being completely emasculated and outmatched by this this terrifying alien creature like that mm. like aren't the, the entire special forces made up of the most badasses ever who destroyed a camp of rebels without barely breaking a sweat like stick around um and then <laughs> no. uh, oh the um and then they end up getting absolutely mullered by this this thing and it, it's not it's not strength that wins the day. It's it's well, it's kind of brains, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. He outwits it, right? Uh, George is like my character is so damn squish, uh, and then <laughs> Anna's like my little halfling has more than you than you. Oh dear, yeah, dude, like legit. My guy is like a little fragile boy, uh, right? Uh, my I'm playing, is um... basically he's so fragile. Yeah, I think that's kind of something fun to be about these kind of little fragile characters. But unfortunately, yeah, the that's party, what we should say. The party everyone that... in our party is tiny. Like, yeah, all small characters apart from Lloyd, who's in chat. Um, he's he's, he's the only group. medium-sized character in the group. Yeah, we are. I mean, literally, like someone could open a door and kill the entire party by squishing <laughs> us against a wall, right? Like it's. Uh... Are you Anna and George? Are you playing a? Um... Are you playing a campaign at the moment? I could love to hear about it. Um... But yeah, I like the. I never saw the. Did you? Did you end up seeing um, the Predator or whatever the? Oh, the new one. Yeah. No, like I just. I heard such bad things all about the stuff it. They've done with it. You know, I actually, I didn't hate. I didn't hate the Predators movie they did. It just. It's still. It, it's the third yeah, best I, movie. I, I, yes, I agree with that. I saw that in the cinema and remember being like, there are good bits in it, but I thought, oh, is it Brady? Someone Brady? Do you not, know how that movie was Brady. supposed to end? How? <laughs> I'm not sure if, you, if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's like an image, I suppose. Um, it was supposed to end with, at the end, uh, a predator ship comes down to pick them up. Yeah. The, the people who survived. Uh, and then all these predators get out and form a line, and then walking out of the middle of them is Arnie. Fuck off. That's how it was supposed what? to. What? 
I, I remember reading the. Yeah, he um, takes the mask off in its army, basically, and he he's a predator. I've been a predator this whole time. <laughs> um, <laughs> like... Don't have to fight yeah. your way, uh, run in and kill, and yeah, then I have to fix you. And then me and her are in a campaign together. Uh, this sounds like you and I. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's cool. I, I'd love to. I'd love to see. Um, other people's D&D campaigns. There's, I've listened to a few, like, obviously, uh, was it Critical Role? Critical Role, yeah. Um, I haven't seen much of Mark Humes' stuff, actually. I saw, like, one episode of that. Um, it's quite good. Uh, uh, like, uh, I think I kind of... Ultimately, it's dependent on the people playing, and there's a big difference between doing, like, D&D with your mates, you know, where none of you are professional actors... And then if you're going to watch a and d stream yeah. or something like that, yeah. you know, I think I, then it, there's loads of them... people who are professional voice actors, like in Critical Role, yeah. uh, it, it really or, does help. Or professional comedians, which changes the whole yeah. nature of it, right? Like uh, we, right. we floated the idea of maybe doing a campaign, but um, we had a lot of inexperienced players and it's also like... Is that something people would really want to see? Um, I think in hindsight, it's been very good, but I think it would be very slow. Like we're giving you like a highlights version right now. Um, yeah, and also you get that whole thing of like, you know, you worry about how you just sort of handle those moments when. Uh, dude, it's it's, it's twenty twenty. Dude, it's kind a hundred percent. It's twenty twenty. Neither of us are like you know hate filled people or whatever. But like, man, we worry about. Um, something that we might say that's taken out of context or maybe in context but stuff. like yeah it's it's tough right so i think it's nice to have um like if we were going to yeah. do it i think it would have to be we all understand that we're doing it for a broadcast and that's that's the attitude that we come into it with which isn't necessarily what people really want to do necessarily right yeah i think like for us as well like doing D D again it's just been nice to have it as a space for us uh, and I, I i don't know i would personally wouldn't be that keen on yeah doing agreed, it agreed outside of a very kind of uh constrained kind of setting for for yeah. it really. I'm not even sure would translate that well or be that interesting to people. Massively. I totally agree, Ian. Um, it's uh, um, probably not our forte, to be honest. I, yeah, look, at, yeah. look how much fucking progress I'm making, guys. I'm really, really happy with this. Um, yeah, actually, um, let's have a... So you've, um, I can see you've kind of got several rows there of plates or, or good to go, really. Yes, I've decided to be a bit more... Oh, hi, Phil. Uh, Phil's back. Um, Oh, hey, Phil. I tried like measuring it out and stuff, but I've got to the stage now where I'm kind of happier just to do these big sheets and then make lots of shapes that aren't necessarily in the most efficient way. But um, I can just smash out a load of them, and uh, it gives me less of a headache and a bit more relaxing, basically. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, like what you're doing is the best way, actually. Um, well, it's it if you if you have the largest bits, right? I mean. Yeah, yeah. Get your large pieces of leather and get your shapes down and and just smash out like basically what you kind of want to do is maximize your time doing each of the tasks and not sort of switching backwards and forwards between all the tasks uh, exactly. all exactly 100 percent. yeah definitely so that's, that's definitely a part of this right if you're drawing out the shapes you want to draw out the shapes if you're punching holes you want to punch holes and if you're cutting them out you're cutting them out right uh, and you want to kind of keep those things regulated to um to, to sort of doing that Phil's uh, like I think we should ban Phil from uh, uh not Phil uh Lloyd from chat man he's such a he's such a negative now he's like imagine this Dave you have an arbor press right and you go bam 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 10 minute 10 minute 10 in a minute uh and then <laughs> Anna's like firing in bish bash bosh 70 quid for a press 30 quid for a die bam basically it's like uh yeah um, <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Um, and Anna's like, yeah, yeah, there's a difference between uh, playing D privately and playing it with an audience. Yeah, exactly. Um, how negative? How's that negative, Dave? It's just positive. No, because I don't have an Arbor Press, Lloyd. <laughs> I'm about to spend 70 quid on plastic miniatures, Lloyd. I don't have money for uh, an Arbor Press. Do you know what I mean? Um, right. Yeah, this year is definitely going to be my year of the geek. I am going to completely commit to being an absolute nerd this year. That's kind of... Uh... You know what? It's it's a lot of fun, right? Like, uh, to be honest with you, uh, uh, it's just it's been nice, kind of, and that's one of the really good things about LARP, just being able to sort of sink myself into a hobby 
where I've been like, yeah, I'm just going to go pretty all out on this and just nerd out on it. And like, you kind of have that thing when you're kind of, or I did like when I was a, a younger, where it's like, you kind of keep certain aspects of what you do. You kind of, uh, not secret, but you kind of don't really put them on show and you're kind of embarrassed to talk about them. I think there's, <laughs> it may have taken me 37 years to get to this point, but I am much more comfortable with me being me than I ever have in my life right now. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, and I'm happy to enjoy those aspects, right? Like, um, be that uh, playing uh, LARP or anything else, really. Like, um, I'm, I'm comfortable LARP's with who I am. LARP's been a huge thing for me, right? Like, in that sense where, uh, like, the fact that we're all doing it together. Like, I wonder yeah. how different it would be had I just had a had like you not wanted to do it right and then i'd gone on and done it on myself on my own and, and i was doing all of all of it on my own right ian i have like i think that you would have had, had a great time you might i think i would have probably had a great time but what i mean is like would i how would i feel about it um two years on yeah like and, and like how would i feel about it in terms of uh uh the context of say even doing something like this right like this is kind of a, a prerequisite of doing this uh stream and the podcast and stuff is is obviously that we're doing it together yeah. and that it's something like we we share that's really you know sort of i think it's it's been really good for like us right because on a personal level you and me i mean we're known each other up since we were free mm -hmm. um but like you know life happens and you kind of move away from each other and what used to be a kind of a 10 minute jog around the corner to go and see your mate is like now a, an hour or more right right and it's like LARP's that thing where we can go and have like an awesome weekend together uh, and just sort of share those experiences right and share common interests as well right like um, yeah like, yeah right we can just deep dive into it together so like phil's saying here LARP has given me so much um and is saying the same i've only been one to event the community is something else i totally agree dude um phil's even learning guitar so i can sit outside my tent and strum some tunes fuck That's yeah awesome. phil fucking personal growth and shit is like i i love that idea of like learning new skills to actually uh, enhance your character and it's like it makes it makes you better like right as a person like personal development i think it's brilliant you also, they're, the, yeah. also they're giving me a load of shit about like having to suffer through cutting these things out like some sort of monk right like i'm having to do my penance by cutting all these things out while he's just mass producing like it's the industrial revolution <laughs> yeah, over there. not yet not yet not yet not yet <laughs> Um, <laughs> got a bone shot yeah oh, there's, that's, that's there's, there's, yeah, there's apps. i actually own a guitar that i messed around with when i was like 20 and then i played a bit when i was on cruise ships yeah let me tell you my story about how the first time and last time i ever played guitar with a band right so i'm working on cruise ships and uh basically a lot of the um crew are filipinos and they're the guys who really run the ship right so they do all the kind of like um they 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 do the compactor stuff they clean the rooms they do like their waiters they do all that stuff they're the but think of it a bit like prison right like where there's all these different gangs and the filipino gang are like the biggest gang and i happened to make friends with these guys like quite early on because they put me in the cabin down below um I, yeah, I worked on cruise ships. Uh, and then the uh, basically I got put on the deck four, three, deck three, which is below the waterline and it's horrible down there. And that's where they put all of like the waiters and all that stuff with the guys. So I was down there and basically I was walking home from my cabin and bear in mind, I was like quite young and really nervous. And I didn't know what was going on. And all these Filipino guys are sitting in the corridor and they're, um, they're hanging out and drinking and I'm like nervously walking through them. And then they're like, hey hey you and i'm like oh fuck oh fuck and i turn around they're like you you want a beer man and i'm like yeah that'd be great and i sat down with them and got on with them like a house on fire but yeah anyway i'm digressing basically i got on really well with all that turns out that guy was like the 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 shot caller for all the filipino guys on the ship so basically he literally walked me around the ship the next day and just basically let everybody know that i was his friend and i was cool and I, it was I mean, pretty awesome. Anyway, so one night, the Filipino guys used to go into the photo lab and have a rock band, right? Um, so they used to go there every uh, once a week or when it was and then rock out. And they asked me whether I played or not. And I was like, 
I don't really like play anything. I can play like Enter Sandman, the, you know, dun, 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 dun. Anyway, so there I am and they're like, hey, why don't, why don't you play? And I'm like, dude, I can't play. This is, I'm embarrassed. And they're like, go on, go on, go on, go on. They're really encouraging me. So, so basically the drummer's there and he's like, all right, you, you lead us off type thing. So the intro is like, I'm going, Right, and I'm basically the idea is I just repeat this, right? And then the drummer starts going, and he's building and building and building and building and building, and then the rest of the band all kick in, and it's this wall, it's like this enclosed room, so it's just like fucking epic right i lasted like two bars once the fucking beat kicked in because of how unbelievably amazing and exciting it was um and then i completely fluffed it and the whole band had to stop and i was really embarrassed but yeah that's the only time i've ever managed to play with a band and it was amazing but um yeah i'm just wow. too i'm too over excitable man i'm not cool enough to be in a band like uh you know what i mean i want to jump around and and um i'm, too, I'm just i'm not cool enough um appreciate dave appreciate does have that. awesome stories by the way like you should, that, that, didn't somebody go overboard on your cruise ship or something like loads of you, you just had uh, dude, i don't know whether i just want to tell stories because i could do that all night but um yeah yeah we had a it was during spring break we had um these two there was a couple of girls and a couple of guys and they met each other on that night it was the first night of the cruise and we we're in the mexican gulf i'm heading down to mexico and um one couple were in the bed basically and the other couple were shagging on the balcony and they fell off the fucking balcony at like seven stories up they fell off the side of the ship into the water um so basically the couple that were in the room um everyone they're all wasted and doing stuff they're also taking um uh what's it called L uh, lens cleaner fluid which is some sort of, <laughs> I mean, dude, just absolute degenerates. Um, so they were absolutely wasted. And they phoned up the bridge and they were laughing to say that their friends had fallen off. So people didn't believe them at first. And then quickly, like soon they found out it was. So then basically we're, the cut to me and my buddies all sitting in the crew bar. And there's an announcement, uh, all crew, all crew, man overboard, man overboard. And you usually get for exercise, for exercise on all of this stuff. And it, this wasn't for exercise, right? So we're like, all right, finish up your beers, lads. It's going to be a, a long night. So we all headed back and we had a meeting. And basically what we wanted to do was we went to see the photo manager. And I was like a senior videographer. So I had my, my little team of dudes. And um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to hang out and watch basically hang out on deck and keep an eye out and see if we could see them right and, and we just assume they're dead right like a hundred percent right you don't fall seven stories off a building onto what would then become concrete at that height right uh, of, of water and then be left there for several hours and survive right so we all head up to the deck and we're looking around and bear in mind that the, uh, a cruise ship is very brightly lit so you're looking out into complete darkness and um we're like we're looking around and can't see anything and it's coming towards the end of um our shift oh no 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 hold on i'm getting this wrong so basically we're hanging out there and they've got flashlights going off the side of the boat and all around us is the there's all the ships in the area when there's a man overboard come and help so we had like tankers and other cruise ships so like every boat you can imagine showed up in the middle of the night and was searching around this area to see if they could find the passengers right and bear in mind tidal patterns are happening so they could be anywhere at this point right and they're trying to work it out um where they are and we also have the lifeboats um doing laps around the ship to try and see if they can spot anything anyway so we're all standing there and then we hear this shout like a hey And then everyone starts yelling, like, well, I didn't hear that. What the fuck? Were they? And everyone's like, shh. And it's just like then the, the one of the flashlights, the, the searchlights on the side of the ship starts flashing around. And then out there, like 50 meters away from the ship, there's this, the, the, the fucking girls there. The girl's floating out there and she's like trying to keep her head above water and the waves are coming over and like covering her head, right? And there's this, 
like really terrifying moment where the um the lifeboat was like chugging towards it, it wasn't like a speedboat it's like a chuggy chuggy slow boat was trying to get to her to try and pick her up but her head kept dunking under the water and it was just like oh my god at one stage she went under for like 10 seconds and we were like oh fuck did we just like did she just go under anyway get to her drag her on board this fucking boat and everyone on the ship just fucking screams. Like, forget, like, your team scoring in the final of whatever cup it is. It was, like, the elation of seeing this was fucking... It was the most incredible thing, like, I'd ever seen, right? It was fucking nuts, right? Um, drag her on board this boat. Bring her on board. And we're, like... We're all, like, thank God, like, well, at least we managed to save one of them, right? Like, at least we got to save one of them. So it's coming towards the end of our shift of being a lookout. This is the middle of the night. And I'm saying to the photo manager, I had a word with my guys. And they were like, listen, Dave, like, we're up now. We're not going to go to sleep. Uh, we'll just stay on. So I said to the photo manager, don't worry about it. With, um, we're gonna, me and my guys, we're going to stay on and, and keep watch for the night. Um, so we go in uh, and we're just going to go have a cigarette. And this is back when I smoked cigarettes. Um, so we just I remember I, I was just lighting up a cigarette. And then we heard this yell from the other side of the boat. So we're like immediately ditch our cigarettes and go running over to the other side of the boat. And there's the fucking, um, there's the fucking dude. And he's like this jacked, like marine looking motherfucker. He's just plowing, doing front crawl towards the cruise ship, right? And we're all like, uh, this is when the um, life uh, guard helicopter is shown up. And, um... But he like almost goes, he swims so fast to get to us that he almost goes underneath the fucking cruise ship, right? Because you can't <laughs> climb on board a giant fucking cruise ship. You have to get picked up by a smaller boat. Yeah, he almost went under and then they dragged him on. Um, and yeah, both of them survived. Um, it was Crazy. fucking insane. This was um, This was on the Grand Princess or maybe the Star. I forget which ship it was. Either the Grand or the Star Princess. I don't know whether you can Google this stuff. It was around... 2006 2005 it's around then fuck i can't remember but yeah that's a true fucking story that's a that happened right yeah. so yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry to bore you with uh, yeah ship. i could i could i could bang on for hours about interesting didn't you shit. have like um the uh, valve weren't they on board your ship at one point yeah They've valve had a way. valve had their staff party uh on on the cruise ship and they were all oh. like really fucking nerdy dudes with like crazy hot wives and they all wore you know like wacky suits that are made out of felt and are bright purple like all of them wore suits like that none of them were wearing like normal looking <laughs> suits they were all like complete nerds do you know what i mean like absolute massive nerds um yeah and i i really wanted to talk to them but um I was working and it was kind of inappropriate. And who do you ask? Like, I can't just fanboy out and say, oh my God, Half-Life 2 changed my fucking life, man. You guys, you literally changed the, the whole system, man. You're incredible. I mean, there's only so yeah. much of that you can do when you're on holiday, right? <laughs> do you remember when we got um, Half-Life? Yeah, man. And we, like, we took it over to my house and we played it. Like, just... We used to do this thing uh, like all the time where um, me and Dave would kind of like... Uh, kind of buy a game and they, even if it was a single player game what we'd do is we'd kind of go over to say and it was normally my place right yeah. and we'd play like uh, we'd sort of take it in turns basically yeah. playing a life it. or a level or whatever we were pretty yeah. understanding yeah and i think i enjoyed i can't tell my experiences of playing that game compared to your experience you know what i mean they kind of merge i, I think we played the whole thing together i think we did yeah. i mean if and another game we did that with do you remember um fear yes like we, we played a great fear game. together a and that was amazing uh, like there were I, bits where i was watching you play fear and because fear is one of those games that kind of lends itself to quite sort of it's a horror action game right action. Mm. and there were bits where you were doing like slow-mo kills that were just absolutely redonkulous and that I, <laughs> you did this kind of shotgun kill at one point that like brought me to my knees it was so good <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is very <laughs> John Woo, happy, right? Like, Doesn't that have, I had that so whole cool. slowdown mechanic, didn't it, as well, which is fucking amazing. Um, Anna, I love Half Life. Fuck yeah, who doesn't love Half Life? Um, yeah. And the uh, intro to Half Life is uh, mind is blowing. Very good, right? Yeah. Um, uh, George is saying he's a Portal fanboy. Portal, the original Portal. I think the second one's also brilliant, but man, like 
that was another game that really changed the, the the whole landscape on what I thought was like possible and how clever it was. Puzzle games, right? It just it's it's a really complicated thing, but then it anyone can do it, which is incredible, yeah. right? Like it makes you feel like a fucking genius when you figure it out. Um, so I used to be really into modding um, and in the modding scene. Like, oh, hold on, ages sorry. Ago. Atten is saying she literally used to play as a toddler with her dad. That's so fucking cute. My God. If I ever have so if I ever have kids, I would love to fucking like that would be amazing to like play games with uh, my kids. So uh Phil saying Half Life is so so good. Um especially the intro. Yeah, we were just saying that, right? Change FPS is forever. Uh totally agree. Uh Raven holds is some scary shit. Oh, Max Payne! Fuck yeah, Max, Max Payne. Max really good. Oh, I love Max Payne. Even the, Did you ever play the third Max Payne game? Yeah, I, think I played them all. I actually um, really liked it. It was very different from the other games and doesn't really get into what it is until like quite a few levels in. I think um, the second one's really good. Like, yeah, the so Fall of Max Payne, do... is that? Uh, what's your yeah, one the that Fall is? of Max Payne. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, really good. Um, but yeah, no, I used to be really into like the modding scene. And um, like this was for well started in Quake Quake One this is uh, I'm age myself so, no I'm it. laughing because Ian it's the same thing right uh, Lloyd's like imagine being a toddler when Half Life came out <laughs> I know yeah we're really showing our age here but like I, I, so I, we sort of started modding uh, like during Quake just like silly little things and just sort of messing around. Um, like we were really into Dust Till Dawn at the time because we were like yeah. thirteen and thought it was let's, the most amazing movie let's, ever. Let's not quote any of the lines from that movie in because uh, that's I mean Jesus. Um, I know, I know. And then we like <laughs> so we were, if you remember like me and Yanni uh, and basically the whole group we were kind of making a um, a Dust Till Dawn mod for Quake. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, that. Just like. Yeah, it was some crazy sort of stupid stuff where we'd kind of get... But, but we had, like, the snooker queue as a weapon and things like that. Don't... But then I ultimately ended up making a bunch of um, sort of other sort of silly little mods and things. Yeah, no dick and, gun, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, like, though. I never actually managed to... Again, this is back in the day where I just would never complete any projects or anything. But I got really into sort of the modding scene during Half-Life and Half-Life 2. Uh, it, was, it was such an exciting time, Many, many it? years of my life were hugely dedicated to that. Yeah, I think I think it's a I think it's a shame that you didn't go into game design or using graphic design in games. I think you would have. I think we would. I think people would be talking about games that you had made if you had, like, uh, <laughs> like straight up. But, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like, it's as with all things, you know, it's like a, just other sort of like. To be honest with you, my, my mental health just wasn't there. Yeah. To be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, like, and I think uh, that's it, a, that's an important factor, right? I think that's um. I think there's nothing. Like, I think there's nothing to be ashamed of, by the way. Ian. And I mean, when I say that, I mean that out of like pure love and respect, bro. Um, yeah, no, I think like basically, uh, yeah, I just uh, mentally wasn't in the right place, and that sort of steered me away from a bunch of uh, hobbies. And then, of course, just your sort of skills, you kind of uh, erode over time, and then you have to build them back up again. Yeah. And that's been part of what's been uh, pretty joyful about getting back into LARP, and yeah. then. Uh, and it's been weird, like, I've, I have i don't really have a, a, as much uh, desire necessary to go back in something like modding or computer game design. It would be interesting, but, uh, like, board game design and stuff it really appeals to me uh, and stuff like that. But, like, the cool thing about LARP has been just actually being able to actually physically make things with my hands. Uh, and there's a real reward to that. I think there's um, a certain... I really mean... enjoyed me and you both have like creative itches that need to be scratched right like yeah. um i find like what we're doing with the podcast and even streams and everything else that we're doing and playing larp is like um it's a really nice avenue for us to kind of like mm. express ourselves and to do that stuff like literally having other people coming on and doing scripts and things like that is it's i absolutely love it dude i really do um we've actually been going for two hours ian almost so i oh, know it's not because we started at half eight. Half. we should probably yeah. wrap up around 10 o'clock though because i do have yeah. work tomorrow um and i've done what i did last time i have a drink and then this drink has lasted me the entire time i need to uh dedicate myself to more drinking basically um i'm far <laughs> too sober um, prioritize, prioritize mental health always dude yeah totally yeah. um next is your own player event oh my god 
Ian, yeah, let's talk. We haven't talked. Uh, we, sorry, we've been. It's been quite personal, actually, hasn't it? Stuff, 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 and the stuff we're talking about. But um, I think like that would be quite fun, wouldn't it? Doing a player event at some point. I think well, I mean, of course, that, that's... we were supposed to be that one, the Withering Dark. No, I'm we... talking about us doing a player event, Ian. Oh, us running one. Yeah, why not? Maybe get someone else that's good at doing the actual event stuff and maybe coming up with some story for it. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, uh, for, for LARP especially, like, and I think because of the responsibility... Oh, yeah, I should... Especially camera's for... up, Ian, for the last five minutes. Camera's up, buddy. There we go. There's yeah. My, there's my face. Um, yeah, I think for stuff like like that, I wouldn't want to sort of uh, necessarily go into like running a game. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I think in the future, I, maybe I, something like that could be yeah. fun. In fact, remember we talked about this before um, that we were really not up for doing a player event. But even you saying it now, I feel like we've come a long way since then. And I feel like mm. maybe that's something we should... We we have a lot to do. If we were going to do a player event, it wouldn't be for a, a year or two. I'll say. Um, yeah, but I, I can. I'm, I'm. Yes, I would have. Uh, this is a really good point, and you're almost fucking mind reading at this stage. By the way, George, um, I'd love to do a player event uh, with a story. And he's what's the line I picked up there? Yeah, he says uh, one that involves investigations and puzzles. Um, exactly what I think. If Ian was doing something like that, it would be very investigative and like learning and unraveling. Like not like Empire is with the um yeah, it's obviously a festival LARP, so there's a lot of story, but this would be a very lead thing, I think, wouldn't it? Or like something where there's a mystery and you have to unravel it, right? Like that's that's kind of how I see your stuff going, right? I don't know. I'd have to I'd honestly have to take a step. I have I haven't actually given it too much thought. Um uh, I guess like I was so like the the big thing for me was really just sort of focusing on my own character. But yeah, I, I'd, I'd be interested in it in the future. I think I'd probably want to go to a player event first before I, before I I did one. But um, yeah, I, I can see yeah, that something like that. That's a fair point. Future. Yeah, let's learn to walk through abandoned holes where everyone's gone. Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah. Or you do something like where there's a bunch of NPCs that seem perfectly normal, but then underneath it, there's something a bit more shady happening. You're not really sure. Like a like a body snatchers vibe where some people are cool and some people aren't. You don't know who's who and like some people might change the thing, the fucking thing, right? Like that as a a basis would be fun. Um, like that's got my brain cooking like immediately, dude. That's that's fucking fun. Um, right, shall we start wrapping things up then? Um, thank you so much for joining us. Like I've had an absolute yeah. blast. Well, I, do you know what? I was, we were doing this. I messaged you this morning, like, Hey dude, did you fancy doing another stream today? And I, you were like, yeah, why not? And it was just like, I was kind of worried because we didn't really have much to talk about. Right. But, um, I think it's been really, we could fun. talk, we could talk for hours. Right. Yeah. The thing Wait. is super Verushkin. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is super Verushkin. Yeah, definitely. Also like a whole bunch of like dudes and like, they're all like misfits from like all out in the marshes in Brickelli and like, like a lot like the script that I'm working on for the intros and outros. Right. Uh, it's kind of yeah. the whole Briar Rock thing. Let's not get involved in Briar rights, man. There are some people <laughs> that have very fucking strong views about that stuff. My God. Um, but yeah, less said about that, the better. Um, was the who's evil or not? Oh, George, you cheeky so-and-so. I like that. Ah, I think that's kind of the thing about... Um, what's the Will Smith movie, um, I Am Legend? Like mm. That movie's been made like three or four times and each time is kind of... There's a huge... like One of them is literally like where the human beings are actually the evil and the zombies are well, actually that's the how, good guys. That's how the book's written. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. And But it, through each incarnation, it's kind of of its age. So they have like... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really interesting stuff. And I think that's a really nice point to have like, who are the bad guys here? Because let's face it, like the Empire probably isn't the good guys in the story of Empire, right? So... Um, I think, to be honest with you, the the Empire, like most things, is kind of that moral grey, right? Like, we're about as much the good guys as uh, Britain was back in the wars against France and so on, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think (laughs) think, uh, history is full of villains, you know, without getting too political about it, right? Like, um, I think we grow up with fairy tales about our own culture and other countries and all that stuff. But when you really look back at it, that history is full of terrible people using power to enforce their will on other people and they do that with immense violence or whatever right so it's 
yeah, it's interesting, right? Anyway, um, before we start going into really dangerous territory, hold on. Um, I am legend is known as the hunter of the zombies. He is evil to the zombies. Absolutely. There's a really good. I watched a really good YouTube video on this. Um, so I don't know where you're interested. Go check that out. But um, yeah, let's wrap things up, dude. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Like I keep saying, um, yeah. I would like to do this again, basically, and uh, maybe. I, I think we'll try and do one next week, right? Uh, I'm working. I work a shift pattern. I, f I don't know what I'm working next week. Actually, I might be might be slightly later if we do do it. But um, it yeah, we'll, we'll try and maybe it's one day next week. Right, it doesn't have to be Wednesday. Yeah, absolutely, dude. So yeah, thanks again for everyone joining us. Um, yeah, cool. All right, shall we do the yeah. uh, strength of the empire? Strength of the bar. Yeah.